Let's go, people. We are back up in here. Rage of Bahamut Virgin Souls. Back for the first time for me because this is one of the series that I swear if I was doing animes back in 2014, if I was doing reviews back then, I definitely would have been doing this series. But do we call this season two? I mean, it has everything there for it to be a season two. But I, I don't know. Guys, help me out on this one. I don't know if this is just a continuation like how they do the Gundam series. Or is this a true season two to Rage of Bahamut? Because everything that it needs for it to be a season two is there. I mean, Kaiser's back. Boss is back. Azazel's back. The only person we didn't see is Favaro! And I'm pretty sure he's coming because we've seen the previews. We know that our boy would be back in this one, but... Rachel Muhammad was a very enjoyable series. It was like a summer blockbuster. It was one of those things that you knew you were going to have a fun ride the entire time. It's not a super deep story. It's not a complex story. It's not like thought provoking or anything, but it can guarantee you that you're going to have a hell of a lot of fun. And Virgin Soul seems like it's going to give us that same type of feel already. And that is nothing but good as we approach this series with the new main character by the name of Nina. And it's about to go in and it is about to be so much fun. And this is another series that again is getting 24 episodes because the last season only had 12. So for this one to get 24 out of the bat, that's nothing but good because if we could have got more out of season one, then it definitely would have been better. But now that we're going to get it for season two, all is well. So let's get into the episode. So Virgin Soul takes place 10 years after the Bahamian incident. And I think it's still a lot of ground we need to cover as far as what happened between those years. Because remember, last time we saw Favaro, Kaiser, who was a knight again, was chasing after him. And then it kind of just got away from there. So they never caught up to what happened from there. And I'm sorry, I mean... Nina as a character, I do love her. I didn't think I was going to like her at first, but she's just bubbly and she's a ray of sunshine and brings hope and light to everybody around her. She just has that charm and I like her, but we all want Favaro back and we cannot wait to see what happened with Favaro. But the world has definitely changed in these last 10 years. Again, Kaiser tonight again. We got a new Lord um, Cheerios. We have like the one that was after the king because... I don't remember. I think he died. <laughs> but anyway, we got a new Lord um, Cherios who is actually killing angels because at this point, the demons have fallen traumatically after this event. The demons are actually slaves, which brings us to Azazel, who is known as the Rag Demon. And he is basically a freedom fighter. He is out taking out slavers who are oppressing these demons and freeing them, fighting for the rights of his people. And is still a beast. He is still straight up slaying monsters. Just slay this big old monster in the episode. It just looked perfect. But Favaro, not for I'm sorry, not Favaro. Kaiser has had many times to bring this rag demon in, and he's failed to do so. He just lets him go every time. That's because I think deep down. Kaiser knows that what is going on with the demons and how they're being treated is wrong. But I wonder how long he's going to be able to keep failing like this before this King Cherios loses his patience and turns his, his blade on um, Kaiser by saying, you know, something's going on. You keep letting this guy get away. I don't think that's going to be good. But everybody's fate, of course, is going to end up running into each other at one point, as we see in this episode, because Nina is a bounty hunter, and she's actually working for boxes. She gets the um, bounty to bring in this rag demon and happens to run into him. You know, Kaiser's on a chase for him as well. They have their interaction. Everybody's fate is going to be entwined. <sighs> But the thing is with Nina, you knew something was up with her in the episode because she was very strong. She's very fast. I mean, she was faster than Azazel when she was taking chase almost. And she has the ability to turn to a big ass red dragon. When she's aroused? Huh. That's going to be interesting. Either way, we are on the road to this fun adventure once again. And I cannot wait. And what's even better is that we're going to have a longer adventure this time. So overall, this was a very good episode. It was very fast paced. It was very action packed, but that's pretty much where you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot in this series because it's very straight to the point. Again, it's not too much that you can dive into or pick apart. It's just a long for the ride. It's just strap in, enjoy it, and have fun with Rage of Bahamut Virgin Soul, just like we did with Genesis. And I am all for it. A very nice outing for the start of this series. 
and I'm going to be in for as many episodes as I can. So guys, let me know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. If you liked this video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There's not a shortage of content you guys can indulge on, on this channel. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now, but you chose to listen to me. I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. Ready for that Bahamut greatness once again. Or for the first time review wise. See you soon.